Every year, the USPSA Nationals is a showplace for the best shooters and the latest technology to be put to the test under the strain of competition. And the Nationals should be a test. After all, the title of national champion is up for grabs. Well, that's true, and this year, as in years past, there's all sorts of new equipment in the hands of the best shooters in the nation. This is the stuff that's going to become the next must-have piece of gear for everybody interested in practical shooting. That is, as long as it wins. The USPSA Multi-Gun Nationals is always a great place to see the new technology put to the test in pursuit of a national championship. And this year, there is a lot to look at. First up is the ever-increasing popularity of magazine-fed shotguns in the open division. Most commonly, they're Sega 12s. Some shooters, like Vernon Lee, are going to them as a way to help with physical limitations. Well, because I have arthritis in my hands and I can't uh, compete if I shoot a shotgun having to load it. I can't feel the shot chill and I drop it all over the place. So I had to do something in order to have fun. I had to switch over to open class and go with a magazine-fed shotgun. Then there are the shooters who are pushing the front of their division, looking for every advantage out there. I saw an episode you guys did like a year ago at Fort Benning and, and saw those guns, and I think they can be the bomb, and I wanted to be one of the first guys to give it a try. I just got it a few weeks ago. Gun ran perfect. I made the stupid mistake of running two double mags, so rounds were flying out, so I've learned the hard way on that, but I think, I think it could be the bomb. Even Jerry kept coming up telling me he thinks it's going to be the way to go, probably. To get his Sega up to speed, Taryn has made his very specialized. And I had it built by uh, Alex Waco and Fred Heinemann out of uh, Texas, and uh, uh, Alex did the compensator, uh, JT Engineering, Jack Travers did the Magwell and the scope mount, and the, I got the RMR uh, new Trigicon on there. And uh, it's a pretty indestructible scope. I didn't want to, I saw last year when Tilly and Mike broke their scopes in boxes, little little other scopes, and this is really a strong, ruggedized scope, so I'm not going to worry about setting it down gentle. And, so uh, it's real light, it's kind of set up like my AR, I want to feel like my AR. I got the Veltor E-Mod on there, it feels the best. I've tried a bunch of other stocks, but that one just feels just like my AR, it feels great. The FN factory shooters were all seen running the new SCAR piston operated rifle. Tasha Hanish took the High Lady Honors in tactical with hers. It's the FN SCAR, it's um, only been on the market for about a year, so it's a piston driven rifle that is, you know, an ethan gun. Well, the gas piston operating system, it uh, keeps the gun cleaner for one. So for those of us who shoot a lot and don't get to clean between, you know, you don't have to worry about the buildup. You don't have to worry about it ruining your accuracy. It's a very smooth, flat shooting gun. It doesn't, it doesn't move. I mean, for a woman like me, it does not move you. It stays down so you can stay on target easier. Another new gas piston rifle seeing action is from Sig Sauer. This is uh, the SIG 5.56 rifle. It's our standard 223 rifle. It's a piston driven system based on the uh, SIG 550 series where they brought the technology here to the United States and then they adapted the lower to use standard um, AR-15 magazines. Eric has a slick rifle and an even slicker optic on top. It's a US optic scope. Uh, their SN4, which is a one to four, has a true one power. So you can shoot it just as fast up close like a uh, aim point or an EOTAC scope. And uh, the reticle is one that I designed, and I wanted to come up with a reticle that was going to be fast up close, but still allowed me some long range precision, which is what we need in this sport. It's basically a circle dot reticle with a three minute dot, um, very similar to the EOTech style, but then underneath it, there's a four, five, and six calibrated hash marks that are calibrated for a certain bullet weight, a certain velocity that I'm using. And once I have everything zeroed, I don't have to make any dope adjustments on the scope or anything. I can do, I can shoot any target from nose to nose to 600 yards within the scope without making any adjustments. But hands down, the most jaw-dropping piece of new technology at this national is the all-new rifle caliber debuted by the AMU's Daniel Horner and Robbie Johnson. It's a new caliber, a new cartridge. It's a 30 Grindle, we call it. It's a 6.5 Grindle case. We've necked up to 30 caliber. We put a 125 grain bullet on it and push it about 2,600 feet a second. And it makes major power factor for USPSA, so we get a few more points. But we still fit in an AR-15 magazine. We're working on about a year and a half, but it, it actually started coming together about two and a half months ago. 
Well, I think based on the number of manufacturers represented, the piston-driven rifle has proven its validity. And I think based on Daniel Horner's performance at this national, the concept for the 30 Grendel works. We just need it to be picked up by a manufacturer so the rest of us can have it too.